Well, Lana, the first thing that struck me when we got to this area is the sound. I mean, despite the obviously shocking images, there are alarms from the houses that were destroyed going off around the clock. And the people who are survivors who are coming here mm. have told me that that's a very triggering sound just to hear the alarms on mm. and on and on. And behind me, I'm sure you can see some families of survivors from this area, from uh, this subdivision, looking for what remains. The houses are completely leveled. I've talked to people who were lucky enough to leave within minutes uh, and, and save themselves. I've talked to people who were lucky enough to shelter in, a, in the one room that kept the four walls of their home intact, despite uh, the roof being blown away. And uh, they've also talked about houses that they believe nobody made it because they they are completely mm. destroyed. Uh, we know that here in Bowling Green, 11 people died. There's one more person from Warren County that had that died as well. So it's a total of a dozen so far. Authorities tell me this is still very much a rescue operation. It has not transitioned to recovery and that there are at least 10 people that are still missing and uh, they're just hard at work. I just saw uh, dozens of Navy sailors that are here working. We know that the National Guard was deployed by uh, over 180 uh, National Guardsmen. Uh, so it's it's a, it's everyone from this community everyone that can access this neighborhood that doesn't live in this community is trying to help. I've seen neighbors uh, driving around offering water, food, whatever people need, including containers where people can put whatever little items they can recover from their house. And that could be, I'm seeing a pair of shoes in front of me. Uh, there's toys, there's there's all kinds of you know memories, photos, jewelry. Uh, people are trying to gather whatever they can, including Christmas presents. I talked to a woman who said, oh. I, you know, I'm suffering because I went shopping after uh, Black Friday for gifts for my grandkids. And she she was able to recover a couple of them, but that was about it after they had their Christmas trees and their lights and their ornaments. And it's just so jarring to see those ornaments just scattered around this mess uh, of debris and, and rubble. For some reason, that makes it just particularly devastating, uh, these unusual December storms when people are supposed to be celebrating uh, family and the happiest time of year. Lilia, you told us uh, a little bit about the rescue efforts um, and, uh, and the understanding that they are still looking for people who might be trapped. Can you tell us, since you've been there, since operations restarted this morning, have they been able to successfully pull anyone out of the rubble? I am not aware that they've been able to pull anyone this morning. I do know that there's at least 10 people, but certainly more that are missing. Of course, there's you know issues of communication. And one of the things I'm thinking about standing here is I'm freezing. My, my hands are freezing. I can't imagine what it must be like to be in this cold, trapped uh, under the rubble. I mean, I can't imagine that people have a lot of time uh, to get to this. I also talked to a neighbor, and of course, neighbors also coming together to a man who had a recent knee surgery. Uh, he's 55 years old but has a hard time walking. He walks with a cane. He survived the tornado in his home and the moment it passed he could hear children. So he rushed across the street to, to protect and save a family of four. He says I was able to save the mother and a child and a small child but I, I don't know about the other two people who live in the house. I hope they made it and that they're okay. We also do know for a fact that a among the 11 dead in this town of Bowling Green, there are children. They wouldn't tell me the ages or how many, but we know that they're small kids. Uh, Lilia, as you're talking about uh, the survivors there and the cold, um, I'm thinking about the interviews that I've, that I've had with uh, various local leaders and, and state leaders um, who have talked about how they've been opening their doors for people whose homes 
were destroyed in the storms. But, um, you know, as I'm looking at, at that wreckage, it's obvious that it's going to take a very long time for those homes to be rebuilt. What are the long-term plans uh, for providing shelter for people um, and something more than just in, in temporary uh, gymnasiums, et cetera? Are there coordinated state effort levels, federal effort levels now? Can you tell us more about that? I asked local authorities precisely about that, and they said, look, that is where everybody's head is at right now. One thing is sheltering people in schools and other spaces, but what's going to happen in two weeks? That's the long-term plan that they're trying mm -hmm. to determine. Of course, there's an urgency for that federal emergency funding to arrive here. Uh, we know that Senator Rand Paul is on the ground, and hopefully people are saying, look, hopefully that'll bring attention to, to here. And that's always the struggle when you have, you know, all of these catastrophes in different parts of the state and in different states is making sure that communities that are smaller, making sure that, you know, the eyes of the world are on Mayfield, but people here in Bowling Green tell me, I, we really hope that, you know, the federal government is paying attention to what's happening here. There are hundreds of homes that have been destroyed, and this is not fixing, you know, a window or a room. This is, right. I mean, I'm looking at a house right now that has what looks like a semi right in front of it. It's, it, I guess it's a moving truck, but it's just so jarring to see the devastation, the amount of force that those tornadoes had that are able to lift something like that you know off the ground and landed in on a home uh, so it's it's going to take a long time i mean i know from covering wildfires that of course you know sba and fema come and you know there might be plans for uh, trailers or trucks or, or who knows, you know, loans. But right now what authorities locally tell me is this just happened and our entire uh, focus right now is on finding the people who are missing and providing the immediate assistance for people who lost everything. Yeah, we're going to continue to hope that that more people are found uh, alive. Lily, uh, thank you for showing us all the humanity that you're witnessing there in Kentucky. I want to bring in now Bernadette woods Plackey, Chief Meteorologist and Climate Matters Program Director at Climate Central. Bernadette, welcome. So more than two dozen tornadoes touched down across six states. Give us some background on how these tornadoes formed. Well, thanks for having me.